Leading things off, our first guest is an author and educator and joins us today for a look at his new book, The Ten Step Man, M period A period N. Put a period after that, too. We'll learn more. Edward Moraine is in the house. Give him a big round of applause, everybody at home and in the studio. Thank you for stopping by. First Thank time you. on the air? No. This, I've been, on, been on open. On, on open? First time on open, yes. All right, so where's the initiation crew? <laughs> <laughs> we welcome you to the Thank show. You. Thank you. We're going to make you feel nice and comfortable. Thank you. You have a wonderful book out, but yes. uh, tell us, when did you start writing? Uh, for this, I think I've been writing all my life, but then I finally put it to paper about yeah. five years ago. A lot of this us have a third book in book. us. Yeah. You, yeah, you think about what you want to do, but right. then you, how am I going to yeah. do this? It's the yeah. fear of not knowing. Then you find out how to do it step by step. Right. Mm -hmm. Then you completed the 10 steps, and right. now you get the 10 step man. Right, exactly. But after your third, this is your third book. This is my third book, right. right. Yeah, this is my third one. And this, this book, basically, like I said, I've been writing it, uh, well, I should think living it all my life, and then ultimately, uh, about five years ago, I guess, after I graduated graduate school, then I decided to put it in writing. Right. And um, it's basically due to the experiences of men interacting with them, conferences and consulting with them. And, um, you know, I'm a pastor of a church, so yeah. I deal what with a lot of men. Unity in Mount Vernon, New York. Yeah. yeah. So in dealing Big with men, everybody out there, the well, so Mount Vernon, the Unity. But yeah, I'm yeah, from yeah. the Bronx, BX. Uh -huh. Straight up from the Bronx, born and raised. Now you're in the Upper Bronx. Now Mount I'm Vernon. Yeah, yeah. Used to be a part of the Bronx, uh, about Mount Vernon, and uh, we do a lot in terms of mm. consulting with men, the challenges that men go through, yeah. and just trying to build a better character and a better man in order to alter the perception of men in society. So yeah. I think that this book came about at the right time, and it's been doing really well. And yeah. so thanks for having us here. You're, you're in line with uh, some of the things that Steve Harvey's doing with uh, men. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, from the simple basic stuff of uh, right. learning how to tie a tie and yeah. all that stuff. We're yeah. open today, by the way. You don't, you know, you yeah, have to wear no, a tie freedom. Today, yeah. But, you know, <laughs> you've got to know how to tie one when That's you, right. wanna, you need to wear one. That's right. So give us a quick, a quick synopsis about <clears throat> the, what's in this book. Well, the 10 step man stands for M, I put the acronym to it, man, M A N. Um, but it stands for man abomination. And what we tried to do was look at the various issues that men face. And you know men go through a lot of stuff oh, yeah. in life that are often undetected and untalked about. And um, this book tries to highlight those issues. It deals with uh, some of the things that men come up against. You have the title, the, the, the subtitle of the book, A Practical Guide to Peace, Power, Purpose, and Liberation yeah. in a World of Women, Wine, War, and Wickedness. Uh, so uh, that's just the, the many various challenges that men face. And the One subtitle? Thing is, uh, the subtitle, right. In the subtitle, In a World of Women, Wine, War, and Wickedness. That's not to suggest, and many people always ask me, does that mean that women are part of the evil. No, women are some of the challenges that men face. Temptations mm -hmm. is what the book is all about. Wine in terms of drunkenness, war within terms of internal. We fight wars within ourselves yeah. that men don't like to talk about trauma, etc. And then wickedness in terms of the spiritual aspect of things we get into this book as well. So um, the book basically not only deal with the problems, but we could highlight the problems all day. We could talk about our problems all day, but we try to yeah. come to solutions. Yeah. Biggest thing we could have is solutions and how we can uh, fight off the various various uh, temptations and the various uh, challenges, issues that we have. And so yeah. that's what the book goes into trying to deal with. Get any of, get, did you get any of it from, uh, from the Bible? Yeah, the whole thing is based on Ephesians 6. And it, yeah. it, although it, it, it covers it, it doesn't go so much into the biblical, but it, it takes the steps from the biblical. Right. In other words, the whole arm of God. It is a section in the Bible, Ephesians 6, if you look at it, it says put on the whole arm of God, the helmet of salvation. So we turn that into mind. How do you deal with your mind? Yeah. Uh, the blessed plate of righteousness. We turn that into a place where you're talking about community. And, uh, good, you know, good, I used good. to be a big social advocate, still am, civil rights organization, head of the NAACP. So I'm very much community oriented. Yeah. There's a piece in there that talk about righteousness and equating it with justice, fighting off racism, et cetera. And then we put on a, uh, the feet fitted with the gospel of peace. So then you talk about moving men in the right direction, mm. how we often make mistakes, make bad decisions, go in wrong direction, and then regret it, get frustrated by it, and then take out our anger on other people. Instead of trying to walk in the right direction or, or redirect ourselves and walk in the right direction. Mm. So it, it, it has a lot to do with the biblical aspect, but yeah. it turns those biblical um, attributes into principles. Into what's in happening to, today. Exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> in order to make it relevant. Know <coughs> Jesus, 
No peace. Uh, okay. <laughs> no Jesus. <laughs> right. No you got to have Jesus in there somewhere. Right. But it, 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 it's, a, um, it, it's a book that goes, expands beyond uh, just the religious and just the, the Jesus part. Although, uh, you know, as a Christian, we could relate to it in terms of that aspect. But I believe that all men, all religious identities and groups can identify with it. Yeah. Because it's something that men face, regardless of your race, uh, regardless of your religion, and regardless of your, your social affiliation. Yeah. I think that it, you, we do go through, all, all men can, can relate. If I were to sit down and talk to you about some of the issues that you're facing, uh, whether you were white or black, you could relate to it. And right. um, that's where we come in. But being that the, the Christian aspect in it, the male racism, et cetera, is in it. Um, we, we would we would go to a certain socioeconomic group. So that the next relate. one would be. <clears throat> mm -hmm. um, yeah. The um, the ten step. Right. Woman. Uh, oh, 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 I'll let, I'll oh, let wait, somebody. Wait, 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 wait. <coughs> I'll let oh. somebody else write that one. Uh. Yeah, I think I think women know more about women. A woman. In terms yeah. of what they yeah what they do, but I can't I wouldn't get into the woman part of it. Although I, I think this book. A lot more women buy it, a lot more women are readers, a lot more women give it to their men, a lot more women read it with their men because they find value in it yeah. in terms of the information. And I wrote it along those lines because I wanted women to understand more about men and the challenges sure. that we face. Because yeah. many times they, uh, you know, we could be blamed for things that we don't even understand and that they don't understand. And as a result of that, we get into more conflicts than we get into yeah. more confidence with each other. What's one of the things that you can think of right now that you would like women to know about men? Um, I think that the biggest thing is that uh, security. I think a lot of men uh, lack security about themselves, com lack confidence about themselves as a result of something that was done earlier mm -hmm. in life, and as a result of that, they're very sensitive to disrespect, very sensitive to um, things that women may say that could cause conflict in their lives and cause conflict in their relationship. So I would just say that uh, a man is used to being built up, and he wants to be built up, but he has to take care of his own insecurities in order to have that happen, so that when things are thrown at him, there's a great portion in this book, if you read it, there's a great part in this book that called The Shield of Faith, which means that whenever somebody throw something at you. Civil rights leaders use it a lot also. Yeah. They throw stuff at you. You don't let it get to you. I think sometimes re none realizing men are very sensitive in certain areas that they don't know about. And not sensitive in uh, a way that would put them, down, uh, uh, put them down, but a way that would really make them intolerant. Yeah. And yeah. so when you throw things at them, they get messed up. Uh, you throw insults at them, they get messed up. But there has to be a shield where you could not allow things God. to get to you. Uh -huh. And that's where we often mess up. Because if somebody says something to you, throw an insult at you, we immediately, it gets so hard, we get angry, we ready to fight, we ready to holler. So I think that if we put up our shield of faith, no matter what anybody throws at us or uh -huh. come at us, if we could be a guy run, running down the street honking his horn. I just had a guy honk his horn at me and started insulting me right when I was coming in front of Lehman College. <laughs> could you believe that? In the Bronx. Yeah. So I said, you know, instead of me getting all uptight and upset, wanting to fight, most brothers with immaturity, weakness, somebody has to do that. Down. Somebody, somebody has to, is, somebody has to tame themselves. Yeah. And so yeah. that's, that's where it comes in, in terms of not letting things get to you so that you could be the man and don't get into unnecessary trouble. Who Got wants it. to get into unnecessary trouble? Where can we go for more information? Well, go to edwardmulrain.com, edwardmulrain.com. I'm going to say this right now. The first 10 people who email me, if you go to edwardmulrain.com, there's a space there to email me. I'll send you a book absolutely free. Okay. I'll send it to anybody who's emailed me. The first 10 who email me at edwardmulrain.com. Edwardmulrain. edwardmulrain.com. Dot com. All right. More yes. rain, more rain. <laughs> Let uh, it grow. Let it grow. There That's you go. right. That's but it's right. not the, the rain that you spell it. Spell it. Like M-U-L-R-A-I-N-E. M-U-L-R-A-I-N-E. I just threw it in there. More rain, more rain, more rain. Because <laughs> we've got more your seeds, rain. things can grow. That's right. But it's plant your seeds. Plant That's your right. seeds. That's right. Plant then it out. There'll be a harvest time. Thank you. Thank you. Give them a big round of applause, everybody. Bro. Edward Morain in the house. Thank you. All right. Bro. Thank you. Appreciate it. We'll take you, a quick man. break right here, but uh, stay right there. We'll be back with more next.